All right, hello everybody. Peter here. I'm just out here, in here, you know, trying to make stuff happen, trying to get by, trying to get things done. I want to show you a couple of whips I have. Wait, first. What's the deal with this uh, a suspicious package I got? Um, who sent this? Somebody fess up, okay? Um, it came from Italy, okay? It came from Italy, that's all, I, that's all I know. It says, Posto Recomandata, Post Italiane. If I stick my hand in here, what I pull out, I think you'll find is a little bit weird. This weird little capsule, um, I pulled it out and I immediately wondered if I should actually uh, be touching it, right? Uh, what is actually going on with this is what I need to know. It's just like this little capsule of suspicious fluid. It, I don't know if it's red or blue or if the container is just blue. There's barely anything in there. There's a suspicious red stain on the outside. Uh, and there's barely anything in there. I didn't actually lick it. Don't worry, I'm a little bit skeezed out about it. Uh, the only thing I can see about it is that it says Klinger on it. I think Klinger is a character in a TV show called M.A.S.H. Uh, that's all I know. One thing that does um, make me feel a little bit better is that it looks like the, this word is written in what seems to be, with, with what seems to be a fountain pen. That's what it looks like. So that makes me feel better, but the, the red stain, the, the red stain is scary, right? It's not, it's not abnormal or concerning that I'm concerned, right? I don't know. And it's just weird how it's like taped shut. It's a little vile. I mean, I'd like to think this is fountain pen ink, but there's such a tiny amount in it, in there, of it, in there. I don't know how much a milliliter is, but um, there's probably just like a milliliter of it in there. I, I, don't, I don't know what to do with this or what it is. There was no explanation uh, or anything. So somebody fess up and tell me what this is, why you sent it, and what I'm supposed to do with it, okay? And if it's going to hurt, hurt me. I think it's I I think it's blue ink, okay? I think it is. But I'm not sure enough to open it. Okay, okay. Uh onto uh, the whips I talked about. Got one back here. Um this is uh, just like a, this is an acrylic painting I was working on. I don't really usually show any of my whips. I usually just like showing my stuff when it's done, but I don't know if I'll ever really finish any of these. I wasn't even recording myself working on this because, <sighs> look, a lot of time when I'm working on stuff, I record myself, it just feels a little bit different. And every now and then it's just nice to work on something and not record myself. The, there's a different level of pressure, right? Anyways, I might leave this like this, or I might keep working on it more. Sometimes when I keep working on stuff, I wish that I could leave it like that and also keep working on it. Um, here's another whip. This is a, this is the first time I tried working with gouache, which is like a weird, more opaque version of watercolor, is what they tell me, but I don't know if it's just a combination of maybe me being unfamiliar with gouache, or the fact that maybe it was cheap gouache, but uh, I wasn't having the greatest time, even though it looks kind of cool. I don't know, maybe I'll give it another shot sometime, or I could wait a while and work on this particular piece some more. I don't know, maybe I'll just stick with watercolor. Here's the, the gouache I was using was called 
uh, Marie's. I don't know, I can't, it's hard to show you without all of my gouaches falling out. Here's my, here's my little palette that I was using. Oh, oh, so the, the main subject of today's video is this sketchbook that someone sent me. It looks pretty normal, uh, but I have been looking for another sketchbook to start drawing in for a long time, and I'm kind of excited about this. Um, the, it was sent to me uh, via a gift, G the gifting function on Amazon. Where's the note that came with it? Here, check that out. See, that's the note that came with it. It just says smiley face. I don't know if you can tell that I bit this right there anyways. Um, so thank you, whoever sent this, check it out. It is a Japanese style sketchbook. And the, at the very, at, at the beginning, it looks normal, right? You just flip through it like so. But once you get to the end, uh, it goes like this. Check it out. It's kind of hard to get it all on camera, but it all f unfolds like an accordion. It gets really long and hard to fold up again. Let me zoom out. There we go. Check that out. I'm afraid I'm gonna ruin it. Look at all that drawing real estate. I can do one big endless drawing, but the beautiful thing about it is, and which I really enjoy, is it can still be uh, like portioned out so it's not too overwhelming, right? So I can still like um, just do like one section at a time, but my, for my each next sec session, my next drawing session, I can pick up where I left off which I think could be really cool. So I think I'll start today uh, on one of these sections. What do you guys think? Let's do that. Maybe two sections, maybe just one. Depends, you know, how far I can get before I get hungry again or something. Maybe I'll just eat an apple. I've been eating a lot of apples lately, depending on the season. Gala apples, Fuji apples. <sighs> Not really into Granny Smith apples yet. Maybe when I get older, that'll be more of an acquired taste. Anyways, enough about apples, uh, let's get into this. So I got into this without much forethought or planning, of course. This drawing took uh, two days, two sittings, settings, I guess. Um, a few, several hours each day. I'm not sure what the total time was. Um, maybe between, maybe like 12 hours or so. And then I sped it up, of course. Um, anyways, how, how's, how was your guys' day? How was it? I mean, I'll tell you how my day went. Uh, I'll tell you everything I did today. Mostly everything. Uh, I woke up around 10, I think, early. early. I, you know, I stayed up a little late the previous night. I sleep for seven and a half hours. I set my phone for seven hours, 32 minutes, 27 seconds. And then I wake up and Pour myself a glass of cold brew. I've just, I haven't been making myself much coffee with my French press coffee maker. I have like a little coffee grinder and everything. I don't know, I kind of go through phases with that sort of thing. And lately, I've been doing the cold brew. I've been loving it. It's, it's, um, it's probably, I mean, it's, it's like, uh, I wish they sold it by the jug. Well, they do sell it by the jug. I mean, the gallon jug. Where I buy it, they have like, I don't know, is it like a liter, two liter? They have gallons of sweet tea right next to it. I wish they had gallons of cold brew, right? I want a lot of it. So I had a, had a nice big glass of cold brew. I went out on, on the balcony, kind of soaked up some morning air. And it was just kind of a cold, kind of dreary morning very overcast. The sun was doing its best to poke through those clouds, but not really winning. And it would continue to lose until later in the day when the clouds would part and fizzle away a little bit. It even rained a little bit throughout the day. Just a little spitter spatter smattering. So nothing too crazy. Uh, and then I, uh, while I was drinking my coffee, I put some rice and some frozen broccoli in my rice cooker. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, and this is 
So I had that for breakfast. I put I put something called Maggie Maggie seasoning on there, which is kind of like soy sauce. But uh, I kind of picked this up in the Philippines when I lived there. I kind of fell in love with that. It, it tastes pretty similar. It's just slightly different. It's uh, dark. It looks just like soy sauce. I guess I'm not sure what's different about it exactly. I like it. So I had that uh, for breakfast, rice, broccoli, and uh, then I started working on a, um, editing this very video that you're watching right now. It takes me quite a while to edit these. Um, what I don't always do, usually when I edit these, I just watch Netflix or, or some sort of TV show or I watch Twitch or something on another monitor while I do it, but this time which I do sometimes, I streamed it. So I streamed the whole process, or most of the process, on Twitch. Uh, so I was just like chatting with the viewers while I was working on it for several hours. The day just flew by like that, and before I knew it, it was like two, or three, it was like three o'clock, and at four o'clock, I have, or had a, uh, a, a guitar lesson. Um, so, for like the last hour of my stream, maybe the last like 30 or 45 minutes, I did, uh, I practiced guitar a little bit. I was doing some scales. It was like a C major scale, a G major, uh, E harmonic minor, the, the, the pentatonic scale, practiced a couple songs that I, you know, needed for the, uh, the my guitar teacher, instructor, I guess you'd call it, gave me to work on. And I kind of felt like I had them down, but of course, as it always goes, uh, when I got to the, I drove to the guitar lesson, um, and by this point, it was really cold in the morning, but by this point it was like 56 degrees, so I had one window cracked down. It wasn't that warm, since the sun still wasn't out, uh, but I had one window cracked down, and it was really nice cr driving. At one point, a car next to me honked really loud and hit the brakes so hard they skidded a little bit because they thought I was like driving in their lane or something, but I really don't think I was. Um, maybe I was totally oblivious or something. Like there was another car next to me merging in really weird. Mm, look, I don't think I was in the wrong. In fact, I'm a little bit indignant that the car who honked and skidded uh, overreacted so much, like chill out, right? But they probably were just, I don't know. When I, I, I never honk at anyone in traffic. Not because I think it's rude or wrong to honk, but if I'm in a position where I need to like react quickly and someone's like about to hit me or merge into my lane or something, I, 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 my like defensive driving instincts take over, right? And I never have the presence of mind to hit the horn. I guess that can be really good though, because then the other person like knows you're there and stuff. I just never think about honking until like 10 seconds or a whole few minutes later. Anyways, I didn't get into an accident. I think I totally stayed in my lane. Maybe I was just getting really close to leaving my lane. The point is, I got to my guitar lesson safely. I got there right on time. I walked in and uh, had my guitar lesson. And of course the songs I thought I had pretty much down pat, I played pretty terribly, uh, but it's all fine. Like the guitar, you know, guitar lesson teacher guy. I don't really know what to call him. Call him a teacher. He never is. A, he's he's never like, wow, you're bad at this. He's very. In fact, at one point he said, he he even told me, how do you know how to play, sheet? How do you know how to read music so well? Which I didn't expect because I didn't think I was reading it that well. I think he expects most people to mm, be better at reading the tabs instead of the notes because some some people are. You know, more comfortable to read tabs. I don't know if you know what the, those are, but um, I don't know. I'm personally trying to stick to reading the notes as po as much as possible and not to rely on tabs, which is difficult. Because like if I look up um, like guitar, you know, if you want to learn like cool guitar riffs and uh, guitar solos and stuff, if you look it up on like what's that website called, Ultimate Guitar and stuff like that. If you look up at guitar solos and stuff, they're all written out in tabs. And I, f I feel like if I learn everything in tabs, I'm like holding myself back. Like I wanna be able to read the actual music. I don't know, maybe I'm over, maybe I'm overreacting, but I think it'd be cool to be able to read the music, play the music with the guitar. Anyways, I've only been to 
I think that might have been my fifth lesson so far. Still beginner, having a good time with it. I've taken my my electric guitar the past three times, my acoustic guitar. It's like a classical style guitar, I think you'd call it. it has a broken string. I'm still, still trying to decide if I need to get, I, there, I found a music shop that would replace the strings for $10. My guitar teacher also said that if I bring it in, he'll show me how to replace the strings. So I need to get the strings. The strings themselves are $10. But if I, but I also want to take in my electric guitar every time to practice with, which he's fine with. But I also don't want to take in two guitars, I guess. And I, and I feel like the, the guitar lesson is only 30 minutes long. So if I take it in and he shows me how to replace even just one string, you know, that's like five or 10 minutes. And the 30 minutes goes by so fast. I feel like I can just look, I feel like I can probably figure it out on my own. Look, here's my plan. I'm going to get the strings and restring it on my own. Look, I'm a big boy. I can do it. I have, it's not like it, it, it would be worse if it was my own only guitar, right? And if I messed up restringing it, I would be out of a guitar until it, I figured out how to do it right. But I have, I have the electric guitar and I have my little guitalele t still too, which feels weirdly small to play after playing the full size guitars. Anyways, the guitar lesson went well. I'm, I like the, taking guitar lessons because it keeps me motivated, keeps me like accountable, like I want to. I want to like have this weird feeling like I want to go back and impress this guy every time. I want to make him proud, right? Every time I show up, like I want to show him how good I am. And I want to like come back and go like above and beyond. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes during the week I end up practicing a little less than before. Also, I have this idea in my head, like what if I signed up for guitar lessons with multiple teachers that didn't know about each other, uh, you know, one on Thursday, one on Tuesday or something, and they were all giving me separate lessons, separate assignments and stuff, and then they were, and I was playing extra hard, you know, practicing for 10 hours a day, and uh, they were all, both of them, I would be like playing them off against each other, you know, like, uh, I, both of them would be impressed that I was learning at like double the speed because I was getting double the instruction or something like that. But even as it is, I don't think I should even, it's fun to daydream about is what I'm saying, but I'm not gonna do that until I can keep up with one guitar teacher. I'm not putting enough time into it, even with one is what I'm saying. Anyway, so the guitar lesson went well, and I just, I just really enjoy walking around with my, I don't have a case for it or anything. I just really enjoy walking around with a guitar, electric guitar slung around, slung across my back, you know? It just feels cool. I feel like a rock star without even playing it. It's just sweet, man. Um, and then every time I come out of my lesson, there's this other kid uh, waiting for his guitar lesson. I think he's like 15 or something. And I'm like, oh, I wish I had started at his age. But at his age, I, I feel like I wouldn't have done it because I wanted to do it. I would have wanted to do it because my parents had told me to, that I wouldn't have enjoyed it as much if my past is any indication of how. I did take, because I did take clarinet lessons once when I was in like middle school, like seventh grade or something, and I didn't enjoy it very much because I just, my heart wasn't in it. I didn't want it really bad, right? This I want a lot more. Anyway, so then after the guitar lesson, I went grocery shopping. I bought a loaf of honey wheat bread. I bought uh, pastrami. I'm big onto the pastrami now. Most of my life, I've been making my sandwiches with ham. But now I've been really enjoying pastrami. And now I also bought some more mayonnaise because I've been out of mayonnaise. And when I got home, I realized I accidentally bought like a much smaller bottle of mayonnaise than I usually buy. Also, someone on Instagram sent me a message with a picture of them sh holding up the same exact bottle of mayonnaise that I buy. How the heck do they know? How, how do they know? Anyway, so I bought more mayonnaise. I bought a couple more jugs of the cold brew. I bought another bag of apples because I was out. Fuji apples. I bought, um, oh no, I forgot to buy some more provolone cheese extra thin slices. That's okay. I mean, those are kind of just like a little perk for sandwiches. Um, so I didn't get cheese. What else did I get? Apples, bread, mayonnaise, coffee. If 
felt like there was something else in the mix. I still had a I still had a 12 pack of seltzer water in my car from the last time I went grocery shopping that I never brought up from brought up to the apartment. I feel like there was something else. <gasps> I bought another dozen pre-peeled hard-boiled eggs. Three dollars and fifty cents for a dozen pre-peeled hard-boiled eggs. One of the greatest inventions of our modern age that I can buy a dozen pre-peeled hard-boiled eggs for 29 cents an egg. That's beautiful to me. I know it's cheaper when you buy regular eggs. First of all, it is crazy that they were selling regular eggs, you know, like the premium, I don't know what these, they feed these chickens, that they sell some eggs for $8 a dozen. But really, there's regular eggs I think you can buy for like $1 or $2 a dozen, but I don't mind at all paying I don't know about one dollar, but like two dollars a dozen is that normal? I don't mind at all paying three and a half dollars for a dozen, because then I don't have to. P people are giving me some grief, okay, about about the fact that I want to that I want the convenience. They're like, but boiling boiling eggs is so easy. I'm like, yeah, but guess what's easier than boiling eggs? Not boiling eggs, and it's barely more expensive, and I can afford barely more expensive. I can afford 29 cents an egg for something. Look, I can just go in the fridge, rip open this little container and just pop an egg in my mouth. Sometimes I'd take two bites. Sometimes it's all in one bite. It's wonderful to me. Cause sometimes when I hard boil eggs, sometimes I slightly overboil them. Sometimes I slightly underboil them. And even when I get them just right, even when I do the whole thing with you, put them in ice water afterwards and do this and do that. I'm sitting there peeling them, which is a drag. You gotta peel all of them, you gotta peel every egg. And then like sometimes there's like chunks of the egg meat coming off in the shell. Look, I'm willing to not have to do any of that for 29 cents an egg. That's awesome for me. Anyway, so I got those eggs too. And then I went home, drove home, window cracked. Uh, got home, brought everything up. All in one load, of course, all my groceries, one load. I mean, not that many groceries, but I also brought up 12 pack of seltzer water and my guitar and my, uh, I have to take my guitar um, cable, whatever that's called with me, because the cable they have at the music place doesn't work very well. The amp there at the guitar lesson place is huge though. I just have a tiny amp and I never use it. I just listen to it directly with my headphones so I don't disturb my neighbors. The amp there is huge and my guitar instructor turns it up so loud, like it's a little bit uncomfortable for me. But he's like, no, we can turn it up loud here. And he just cranks it up and I'm just like rocking out in there. And I'm like, I feel like the whole building is shaking. And there's like kids in the next room practicing their dinky little violin, plunking away on a little piano. And I'm just like, <sighs> this amp, you know, the, the floor is shaking. And he's like, ah, it's fine. So I got home and uh, put my groceries away, cracked open the one last uh, seltzer water I had from the previous uh, pack, and then I finished, um, finished editing this video, which I hadn't finished while I was streaming. And uh, I watched, I, I was watching Billions, season three of Billions on, uh, on Amazon while I was doing that. This is a pretty good show. I like that guy, um, Damian Lewis. I also liked him in that other show, Life, where he was some cop who enjoyed eating weird fruits all the time. That was cool. He's good. And in Homeland, he was pretty good. Homeland, ugh. I kind of want to rewatch Homeland, but that's one of those shows I want to rewatch, but have my memory scrubbed first. But maybe it'll be good enough, even with my memory. I'm not sure. Um... Yeah, so, so just now I finished editing it and then I scanned in the drawing, which took forever because sometimes my scanner just doesn't work. I just have to turn it on and off a bunch of times, unplug it, replug it, update my scanning software. It took like half an hour to scan this thing in, if not 45 minutes, but I got it scanned in and, and now I am recording this commentary and then I'm going to go put it on the video and it looks like this is a very long commentary, and I know the intro to this video was like seven minutes, so this is just gonna be a, a big, long 
video in general. Hope you don't mind. So that's all that I did with my day today, uh, except for all the things I didn't feel like telling you. But it was most of the things. I um, hope your day went okay. I mean, I'll, and also the things I just forgot. I don't know, there are probably some other things that happened that I don't remember. All I, that's all I got to say. Let me know how your day went, all right? Hope you have a good one. Thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, all right. Goodbye.